now we are going to start a new chapter in classical mechanics actually this chapter will deal with motion of a particle or system of particle in a central force field actually this is a very important chapter for the students preparing for the examination of bsc and msc and at the same time it is equally important for the engineering students and the students preparing for various competitive examinations like civil services examination or state public service commission examinations this chapter is very important and apart from that if you are preparing for the net grf examination this series of lecture will be very helpful to you so this is a most important chapter of classical mechanics and uh, it is of great importance for various examinations so be serious watch all the videos of this series and definitely you will be benefited uh, from my video lectures uh, as uh, the chapter is related to central forces but uh, in the first few lectures we will not deal with the motion in central force field actually we will deal with some of the basic fundamentals so that uh, we will be able to understand the concept developed in this chapter in fact uh, you have studied the two dimensional motion or motion in a plane like projectile motion circular motion these uh, chapters are studied in classical mechanics in lower classes in 11th and uh, definitely when you study circular motion or the um, uh, projectile motion you have used uh, the cartesian coordinate system to handle the problems but one thing uh, uh, here i uh, would like to mention that uh, if you are going to deal with the problem of motion in central force field then actually the cartes use of cartesian coordinate is not convenient but if you use the uh, plane polar coordinates then the problem becomes easier to understand so in fact uh, while dealing with the problems of motion in a central force field the most convenient coordinate system is the plane polar coordinate system because the motion in a central force field is an example of motion in a plane in fact this fact we will actually prove when we will discuss the uh, uh, problem of central force field then you will see that this will be actually one of the important properties of central force that motion under a central force always takes place in a plane so one can think that if it is a motion in a plane we can handle the problem by the use of cartesian coordinate system and also by the plane polar coordinate system uh, i i i am not saying that this this problem cannot be solved in cartesian coordinate system but you will feel very hard to solve a problem if you use the cartesian coordinate system in dealing with the problem of central force field so in instead of the cartesian coordinate system while dealing with the problem of central force field we actually use the plane polar coordinate system to solve the problem it is it becomes actually more convenient in comparison to the cartesian coordinates okay so before uh, dealing with the actual problem of this chapter on motion in central force field i would like to uh, uh, like to uh, uh, explain some of the important concepts regarding uh, the plane polar coordinates in fact uh, since you are you will see the discussion on motion so it is uh, quite evident that uh, we should know what will be the expression for the velocity of a particle acceleration of a particle in plane polar coordinate i hope every uh, one of you know the 
uh, velocity and acceleration in Cartesian coordinate system. But as we will use the plane polar coordinate system in dealing with the problem of central force field, so definitely we have to know what are the expressions for the velocity and the acceleration in plane polar coordinate system. Okay. And as the velocity and acceleration are vectors, so definitely there will be a use of unit vectors in plane pole in, in Cartesian coordinate system in two dimension. You normally use two unit vectors i and j. I we write the unit vector in x direction and j in y direction. But in this case, again there will be two unit vectors. And those two unit vectors are called radial unit vector and the transverse unit vector. So before knowing the expressions for the velocity and acceleration of a particle a moving in a plane in plane polar coordinates, we should know uh, what are these uh, radial unit vector and the transverse unit vector. And, def and we have also uh, to know what are their derivatives because in calculation of velocity and acceleration you will need the time derivative uh, and uh, other derivatives of this uh, these unit vectors. So uh, we will start our uh, discussion on motion in a central force field uh, by uh, dealing with two basic fundamentals. First of all, we will deal with the unit vectors in a plane in plane polar coordinate system, and after that, we will deal with uh, the velocity and acceleration of a particle moving in a plane in plane polar coordinate system. Okay, I think you have understand what uh, I I I <coughs> want to say you. So, let us start to know about the unit vectors. Uh, in the plane polar coordinate system. You have definitely studied this plane polar coordinates in the study of your in course of in, in your course of mathematics in the plane geometry. Uh, <clears throat> so it is not very a uh, new concept for you but uh, I would like to acquaint you for, 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 uh, for, <clears throat> for these concepts so that you will feel convenient while dealing with the problem of central force field. In fact, uh, to assign uh, the plane polar coordinates of a point in a plane, actually we choose an origin O. So you can see this figure, this point O has been taken as an origin. And we also consider a line in any direction. As you can see in this figure, I have considered a line OX in any arbitrary direction and this line is actually called initial line. So whenever you have to fix the plane polar coordinate of a point, let us say a P in a plane, first of all you choose an origin and an initial line. Okay, Then join that point P whose polar coordinates you have to know uh, with the origin. So I have joined here the point P to the point O which is actually the origin and the radial distance that is the distance of point P from the arbitrary origin O is, is one of the coordinates of this point and that coordinate is denoted by the symbol R and it is called radial coordinate of this point P. So OP in this figure is simply equal to R and this is one of the coordinates of this point P. Then you can see this radius vector OP makes an angle theta with the initial line. This angle theta is taken as another coordinate of point P. So the plane polar coordinate of point P uh, are simply R theta. You can say that this r theta is are the plane polar coordinates of the point P. Now this uh, radial coordinate r is never negative. r is never negative. It will be always equal to or greater than 0. So I have mentioned it here 
that uh, O uh, so that uh, zero is less or equal to R and this is less or equal to infinity. It means R is never uh, negative. Okay. Now the another coordinate theta. This may be taken as positive or it may be taken as negative. But uh, when you will take it positive and when you will take it negative, it depends on the sense of rotation. Actually, if uh, this theta is measured in anti-clockwise sense, as you can see in this figure, if you measure the theta from initial line to this uh, radial vector r, then the sense of rotation is anti-clockwise. So, if theta is measured in anti-clockwise sense or anti-clockwise direction, then theta is taken positive. And if it is measured in clockwise direction, then it is taken negative. This is just a convention. Conventionally, we take theta positive if it is measured in anti-clockwise direction. And conventionally, we take it negative when we measure it in clockwise direction okay i hope you have understand that uh, what is the what are the polar coordinates of a point situated in a plane okay r is called in fact the radial coordinate of point p and this theta is called that uh, the <coughs> in fact uh, transverse coordinate of this point p okay now, just like Cartesian coordinate, as you define in Cartesian coordinate the unit vector i along the x-axis and j along the y-axis, similarly, in this case, we define two unit vectors. One unit vector, which is called actually the radial unit vector, that is defined in the direction of increasing r, that is along op. As you can see, this R increases in the direction OP. So, in increasing direction of R, we define a unit vector and we denote that unit vector by the symbol R hat and this is called actually the radial unit vector. Have you understand? So, R hat is what? This is actually the radial unit vector and radial unit vector means a unit vector which will be parallel to the radius vector r of this point p and it is a unit vector in the direction of increasing r. The direction in which r will increase, this unit vector r hat is directed in that direction. Okay. Now, again we take another unit vector theta hat and this theta hat actually makes an angle 90 degree or pi by 2 uh, with the radial unit vector and so this theta hat is also a unit vector and it is uh, directed in a direction perpendicular to the radial unit vector and this theta hat is actually called transverse unit vector. Since both of these are unit vectors so modulus of r hat and theta hat both will be equal to 1. Actually, I have mentioned these things here. You can see that there are two unit vectors. First one is called radial unit vector, which is denoted by the symbol r hat. And as I have told you that it is a unit vector in the direction of increasing r. And it is directed along the radial unit vector, radial vector r, so or radius vector you can say. So r hat is actually parallel to the radius vector r. And another unit vector which is called transverse unit vector is denoted by the symbol theta hat and this theta hat is actually a unit vector in the direction of increasing theta, increasing theta and you can see the figure that this transverse unit vector theta hat is perpendicular to the radial unit vector r hat or the radius vector r. Okay, so this is a very basic fundamental thing and I hope you have understand what uh, I have discussed here. Now, uh, as uh, the prime aim of this lecture on this basic fundamental uh, is uh, how, to how to represent this uh, radial and transverse unit vector in terms of polar coordinates 
and uh, what will be their derivatives because this thing will be very helpful in discussion of the problems on uh, motion in central force field in fact you can see first of all i am talking about the radial unit vector which i have denoted by the symbol r hat actually this uh, r hat uh, unit vector which is called uh, actually the radial unit vector and it is denoted by the symbol r hat this uh, r hat uh, is just equivalent to e to the power i theta this is sign of equivalent you can see r hat is equivalent to e to the power i theta where i is for iota that is imaginary and you can say that i is equal to a square root of minus 1 but uh, definitely a question will be in your mind uh, how we can say that this r hat which is a unit vector in the radial direction this is actually equivalent to e to the power i theta how we can say you know uh, that e to the power i theta is equal to what this is cos theta plus i sin theta you know it you have definitely studied this thing in your course on trigonometry now if you want to find the magnitude or modulus of this e to the power i theta can you say what will be this definitely you can say definitely you have studied the uh, complex analysis or complex number in your uh, algebra course so this mod of e to the power i theta you can say this is simply cos square theta plus sin square theta square root and this will be simply equal to 1 so what you are seeing here e to the power i theta is equal to this much and mod of this e to the power i theta is equal to 1 and you know the modulus of a unit vector r hat or any unit vector is also equal to 1 but uh, one thing uh, definitely will be in your mind but this is only the magnitude but what about the direction what about the direction because r hat is a vector so it has direction uh, does this e to the power i theta has direction definitely yes if you have studied the, the complex analysis you know any complex number or any complex quantity is just equivalent to a vector it has a particular sense we represent it in the vector form if we have studied the j operator in the discussion of uh, alternating current then you have seen that actually uh, this uh, e to the power i theta or any complex quantity is always equivalent to a vector because uh, when we consider e to the power i theta equal to cos theta plus i sin theta it represents both the magnitude and direction here actually this uh, quantity uh, it makes an angle theta with the initial direction and that theta is actually the measurement of its direction so e to the power i theta has direction too or in nutshell you can say that any complex quantity is equivalent to a vector quantity it has both magnitude and argument argument means direction okay so this r hat is represented or you can say that this r hat is just equivalent to e to the power i theta okay now as i have told you our aim is to find this is just definition or or you can say that representation that radial unit vector may be represented by e to the power i theta okay now our aim is to find the time derivative and the theta derivative of this r hat because it will be frequently used in the discussion of our actual course so let us try to find a what will be d r hat by d t it means you are going to find the time derivative of this radial unit vector you can see 
दिस विल बी डी डी टी ई टू दी पावर आई थेटा ओके नाउ सिंस ई टू दी पावर आई थेटा इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ थेटा बट यू आर गोइंग टू डिफ्रेंशिएट इट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टी सो दिस विल बी जस्ट ट्रीटेड एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ फंक्शन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल we will differentiate this e to the power i theta with respect to theta and after that this theta will be differentiated with respect to t okay now can you say that d e to the power i theta d theta will be what this will be simply i e to the power i theta you know and d theta by dt in dot symbol we simply write it theta dot whenever you differentiate a quantity with respect to time t then this is denoted by the dot symbol so in a stead of d theta by dt we simply write theta dot okay so dr by dt is equal to i e to the power i theta times theta dot now we will actually simplify the rhs of this equation to a little bit you can see what we have obtained you can see that this dr hat by dt you have obtained that this is equal to i e to the power i theta into theta dot okay now this i can be written as e to the power i pi by 2 e to the power i pi by 2 you can write it why we can write it just uh, uh, we will clear it and this is e to the power i theta times theta dot let us see how uh, you can say that this i is equal to e to the power i pi by 2 again apply the euler's formula e to the power i pi by you can write this as cos pi by 2 and plus i sin pi by 2 can you write it or not definitely yes but you know that cos pi by 2 is 0 and uh, sin pi by 2 is 1 so this will be simply equal to i so you can see that this i is equal to e to the power i pi by 2 so instead of i i have written here e to the power i pi by 2 now e to the power i theta times e to the power i pi by 2 what will be this this is e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 theta plus pi by 2 and times theta dot but can you say what is this e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 actually this is actually the transverse unit vector e to the power i theta this is radial unit vector and e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 this is transverse unit vector you can see the figure in fact uh, uh, with respect to this initial line what if you draw the initial line here let us say at this point p we draw a line parallel to ox and then this angle will be theta and this angle is pi by 2 so this theta hat makes an angle theta plus pi by 2 with the initial line so if you denote this radial unit vector by e to the power i theta then this theta hat will be denoted uh, or this will be equivalent to e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 have you understand or not so you can say that e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 this is simply equal to what this is simply equal to theta hat this is the transverse unit vector okay so uh, finally you can see that the time derivative of the radial unit vector r hat that is dr by dt what what is this this is equal to 
theta hat at times theta dot theta dot times theta hat i have derived it but you should remember it because when uh, we will study the motion under central force field this result will be frequently used and uh, in that case you have to write down this expression directly so i will suggest you after getting this result you should memorize it you should remember it okay now here uh, we have actually found the time derivative of r hat now our aim is to find what will be the derivative of this r hat with respect to theta with respect to theta so now we are going to find d r hat by d theta okay you can see this will be d d theta and uh, how this r hat is defined you know this is e to the power i theta okay and since here differentiation is with respect to theta so this will be simply i e to the power i theta okay and again you can see in a state of this i just you can write e to the power i pi by 2 so i write here e to the power i pi by 2 in a state of i you have seen it here you can see and times e to the power i theta okay now this uh, can be written as e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 theta plus pi by 2 but can you say what is this definitely you have seen here that uh, actually this e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 this is simply equal to the transverse unit vector theta hat so you can say that the derivative of radial unit vector r hat with respect to theta this is simply equal to theta hat this is a very important result when you will differentiate r hat with respect to theta you will get the transverse unit vector theta hat so this derivative is directed dr hat by d theta is directed in a direction perpendicular to r hat okay now we will see the same thing for the transverse unit vector so now we are talking about transverse unit vector transverse unit vector transverse unit vector okay you have denoted this transverse unit vector by the symbol theta hat and you have seen that uh, this theta hat is just equivalent to e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 you have just seen okay this is actually the representation or the definition of this theta hat okay now first of all uh, we will find again what will be the time derivative of this theta hat so d theta hat by dt what will be this you can see this will be d dt and theta hat in a state of this theta hat we will write e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 okay theta plus pi by 2 now since uh, e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 is directly a function of theta but you have to differentiate it with respect to t so just treat this function like a function of function so how you will differentiate it you you know it very well this is d e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 d theta okay or you can say d uh, d theta at times 
डी थेटा डी टी ओके नाउ यू नो दैट द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ ई टू द पावर आई थेटा प्लस पाई बाई टू डी थेटा दिस विल बी वॉट दिस इज सिंपली आई ई टू द पावर आई थेटा प्लस पाई बाय टू थेटा प्लस पाई बिकॉज पाई बाय टू इज ए कॉन्स्टेंट फैक्टर ओके एंड दिस इज थेटा डॉट डी थेटा बाय डी टी दिस विल बी रिटर्न एज थेटा डॉट ओके ओ सॉरी 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 नो यस इट इज राइट दिस इज थेटा डॉट नाउ अगेन we will write here this i equal to e to the power i pi by 2 i pi by 2 times e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 okay and times theta dot now e to the power i pi by 2 times e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 what will be this this will be e to the power i theta plus pi pi by 2 and pi by both powers will be added and so this will be e to the power i theta plus pi okay and uh, you can write it uh, sorry uh, this is theta dot 2 and uh, now you can write it e to the power i theta times e to the power i pi okay times theta dot okay now see e to the power uh, right first of all theta dot here then e to the power i theta okay now e to the power i pi can you say what will be this this will be cos pi plus i sin pi okay cos pi plus i sin pi but uh, you know cos pi is equal to minus 1 and sin pi is equal to 0 so this will be theta dot times e to the power i theta into minus 1 plus 0 okay now i am writing the result here you can see that this d theta hat by dt what will be this this will be simply minus theta dot e to the power i theta but you know that this e to the power i theta is equal to r hat so finally you can say that the time derivative of uh, the transverse unit vector theta hat that is d theta hat by dt this is equal to what this is minus theta dot times uh, r hat minus theta dot times r hat this is your final result so again i am telling you that uh, you should remember this result because this result will be also used frequently in our discussion in the further lectures so d theta by dt is equal to what this is minus theta dot r hat okay now here uh, we have calculated actually the time derivative of transverse unit vector theta hat now uh, we will try to find what will be the derivative of this theta hat with respect to theta let us try to find it so now d theta hat by d theta okay now see this is d d theta and what is your theta hat you have seen its uh, representation this is e to the power i theta plus pi by theta plus pi by 2 okay now what will be the derivative you can see this will be i e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 okay 
now again we will write e to the power i pi by 2 in a stead of this i you have just seen and times e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 okay now again add the powers of e so this will be e to the power i theta plus pi okay and this is e to the power i theta times e to the power i pi okay and you know this is e to the power i theta and what will be e to the power i pi you have just seen it i am again repeating the same thing this is cos pi plus i sin pi okay and this is e to the power i theta times minus 1 plus 0 because sin pi is 0 and so this is simply minus e to the power i theta but you know that this e to the power i theta is equal to r hat so finally you can say that d theta hat by dt this is equal to minus r hat so uh, you can see what is its direction this is actually in the opposite direction of the radial unit vector so actually if this is the direction of r hat and this is the direction of theta hat you have just seen that in the direction of this theta hat this derivative lies that is dr by d theta see here dr by d theta uh, is dr by d theta this is equal to theta hat okay so this dr by d theta this is actually equal to theta hat but d th theta hat by dt this is actually minus r hat and this equal to d theta hat by dt it means uh, when you differentiate r hat with respect to theta uh, the result is uh, the transverse unit vector theta it means uh, this uh, vector is just rotated by 90 degree and when theta hat is differentiated with respect to sorry here is theta not t okay so here will be theta and this is again rotated in this anti-clockwise sense and so it is on the line of minus r hat so uh, these were the ideas of the uh, radial and transverse unit vectors in plane polar coordinates which will be needed for our discussion on central force field uh, i hope you have understand this uh, elementary idea this is a very simple idea and definitely you have understand uh, uh, I, in this lecture uh, i would uh, not like to discuss the expression for velocity and acceleration because then the lecture will be somewhat lengthy so in the next lecture in continuation of this we will define the velocity of a particle and acceleration of a particle in plane polar coordinates okay and those results will be also very important for the discussion on the motion in central force field